Hi guys, so today I'm going to be starting my crime series again. I have honestly been binge watching crime shows for probably over two years. I always feel like there's not enough crime shows or people reporting it. Like I have a couple of my favorite YouTubers that I like to watch, but I am just always eager for more. I always wanna hear more stories and I just feel like I can help contribute to that and I can help shed some light on some stories. I'm going to specifically be focusing on for at least the first couple of my videos on Native American women that are going missing. This is a huge epidemic that a lot of times goes unnoticed with reservations and just law enforcement being different on different things. A lot of crimes can happen on reservations and can happen off of reservations and just not a lot is being done about it. And moving to Montana, I have been immersed in a lot more of my native culture and I have heard and seen some things that people say happen to the native women here and it honestly scares me because I am half Native American. I might not look like it right now because obviously I have blonde hair, but my dad is full Native American from the reservation, full-blooded. My mom is full white. She has blonde hair, green eyes, so I am left with this, half Native, half white. So this really hits home because I feel like there's still a certain prejudice against Native Americans that I do not like, and I just kind of feel like there's a lot of racial slurs towards Native Americans, such as calling them Indians when, if you don't know that Columbus is a freaking dumbass and did not know that he was not in India, he was in America, and labeled them Indians, savages, whatever you wanna call it. And being out here in Montana, I have seen two different sides of, you know, native people and then people that don't like the native people, if that makes sense. So this just really hits home because I kind of feel like a lot of these cases go unnoticed and that's not okay. Just because they're Native American doesn't mean that they have any less rights or that, you know, their reservation is made to, you know, deal with that stuff and the U.S. government is just not getting their hands dirty in it. And with this case especially, it just breaks my heart because, you know, a lot of people want to label natives as, you know, lazy, they don't do anything, all they do is collect their checks, and that's it. But this story about Savannah Greywind, she was aspiring, she was a medical assistant, she was going to college, she was doing things with her life. She was, you know, beating the statistics, beating the stereotypes, beating what people label Native Americans as, and she was very successful for how young she was. So this case is actually talking about Savannah LaFontaine Greywind. She was born on August 9th, 1995. She had beautiful green eyes, freckles, long auburn brown hair as a lot of natives do. They have a reddish tint to their hair. She had a tattoo on her ankle that read too beautiful for earth and she also had a dream catcher down her right leg. She was a member of the Spirit Lake tribe and she had also just enrolled in North Dakota State University. So it's a normal day on August 19th, 2017 17 in Fargo, North Dakota, where she lived. Savannah lived with her family in a three-story apartment building, 2825 9th Avenue North, which consisted of her 18-year-old sister, Kayla, her 16-year-old brother, Casey, her 20-year-old brother, Joe Jr., and of course, her mom and dad. Their family was very close, and Savannah was helping out by taking her brothers and sisters to and from work, giving them rides, but she was also looking forward to the next chapter in her life because she just so happened to be eight months pregnant with her high school sweetheart, someone she's been with since she was 15 years old, which is pretty amazing. They were madly in love and this man was named Ashton Matheny. All of her family said that they had a great relationship, there was never any problems, they were so in love and they were expecting a beautiful baby girl named Hasley Jo and they were just so excited to do this. They actually just signed a lease on a new apartment so she would be moving out of her family's house and they would be living together as a family. Their daughter was expected to be born in late September 2017 and they were so excited they had already gotten a few things for this little girl. They were prepping for it and her mom was actually planning on throwing her a baby shower the following day. This Saturday morning, Savannah was, you know, just being comfy. She was pretty pregnant so she just threw on a pink shirt, shorts, and Nike slides. 
An acquaintance named Brooke Cruz, who would frequently go to the Dollar General where her mom works, lived in the apartment building as well up on the third story. They were acquaintances, they had, you know, she knew her mom, she would go into her work, they would shop there, her and her boyfriend, William Cohen, pretty frequently, but they were nowhere near friends. She was 38 years old. They were acquaintances, but they were nowhere near friendship because Brooke was way older than Savannah, and just because they lived in the apartment building doesn't mean that they were close at all. But what was weird is Brooke reportedly walks by and sees the door to their home is open. So she decides to poke her head into the door. And when Savannah comes to the door, she asks her if she could help her with a sewing project that she needed to hem a dress and she wanted Savannah to wear it so she could hem it real quick. So she offers to pay her 20 bucks at 1.23 p.m. Savannah texts her mom to let her know that she ordered a pizza for the entire family and that she was going up to apartment five to help her neighbor with a sewing project. At 1.24, she also texts her boyfriend Ashton before going up to the apartment. Around 2.30, when Savannah still wasn't home, her mom was starting to get a little worried because she had previously made plans to take her brother to work. Her mom had her 16-year-old brother go up there and check on Savannah to see what was taking so long and if she would still be able to give him a ride to work. But when he went upstairs, he could clearly hear that a machine was going on, a sewing machine, but no one answered the door. He thought this was really strange. He went downstairs, told the mom, no one answered the door. I don't know, but I heard something going on in there. And so she ends up sending Savannah's dad upstairs. And this is when Brooke Cruz answers the door and tells her father that she was going to be a little bit longer. I've had many dresses hemmed for pageants and nowhere does it take a couple hours to alter a dress. Basically, you put on the dress and the seamstress will pin where the dress needs to be taken in, let out, if it needs to be raised off the ground. They just stick little pins where it should be. That should only take about 15-20 minutes. And what's really weird about this is if the dress wasn't specifically made for Savannah, why are you asking an eight-month pregnant lady to come try on a dress so you can hem it and it taking hours long. This just makes no sense. So after they pin the dress, you just take the dress off and you can leave and the seamstress is supposed to do the rest and you come and try back on the dress, it should fit. That's how it works when you are altering a dress. I have done many, many, many dresses and that's how it works. Nowhere should it take that long. Her mom decided this was just no big deal. Don't freak out. I'm just gonna take my son to work at around 4.30. But when she came home and noticed that the pizza that Savannah ordered still was left untouched, there was no sign that she came home. She decided to go upstairs herself and go to this apartment number. And that's when they told her that Savannah had already left. I know when I was eight months pregnant, I needed to eat every hour or every couple hours. I always had snacks on hand and I definitely would not be passing up a pizza that I ordered. That is for certain. So her mom knew something was just really off about this entire situation. The fact that practically a stranger is inviting her to her house that she barely knows. It was just the circumstances were just too much to keep putting it off as, oh, she's fine. Her mom gets in touch with her boyfriend, Ashton, and that's when he tells her that Savannah was texting him and then all of a sudden just stopped and he has not heard from her. So this didn't make her mom feel any better. Once she got this clarification that Savannah was not with Ashton, she wasn't at their apartment and supposedly she wasn't at the neighbor's apartment upstairs that she said she was at. She didn't let anyone know where she was, where she was going. She would not have gone on foot walking anywhere her feet were very swollen she was pretty pregnant she wouldn't just go off on foot she had no history of mental illness she had no history of running away so her mom decided to report her missing to the police you know Savannah was in a situation where her parents were excited her family was excited they were supportive she was still living with her family her high school sweetheart was still supportive still loved her still wanted a family with her that's pretty hard to come by in today's day and age so the fact that she had so much support around her pregnancy and she was just so excited and she had a baby shower the next day there is no way that savannah would have just ran away 
So the police surrounded the entire apartment complex, supposedly with tape, and they decided to go up to where Savannah's last whereabouts were, which was apartment number five. They go up there, do an extensive search of this apartment where Savannah was last seen. They didn't see anything out of the ordinary. And according to Brooke, when they did this search, the newborn baby was tucked next to William on the couch with a blanket over it, and Savannah's body was wrapped up in the closet in their bathroom. And yet somehow the police missed this. I don't know how a eight month pregnant woman goes missing and you don't go into the apartment and say everyone out. Stand out here, we're going to do an extensive search of this apartment, we're going to look for signs of a struggle, we're going to look for blood, we're going to spray luminol, we're going to tackle this entire thing. A pregnant woman is missing, and yet, according to Brooke, she was in the apartment, dead, stuffed inside a bathroom closet. I don't know how you don't check a bathroom closet, that seems like the most obvious place. That seems like if I'm looking for a missing person, I'm probably going to check closets. I'm probably going to check every little detail to make sure that I cross out this house for anything. And especially just having someone sitting on the couch the whole time while you're searching the apartment, that doesn't make you feel a little weird. That doesn't, you know, that's weird. He's not standing up to greet us. He's not standing up to introduce himself. He's just sitting there on a couch with a blanket over him. Meanwhile, they missed a pregnant woman. They missed a newborn baby that could possibly be in harm's way with this couple. According to Brooke, they were there the whole time. Of course, the police said that they couldn't find anything. So meanwhile, the next day on August 20th, it's reported that William hollowed out a dresser in his house, wrapped Savannah's body in plastic and towels and stuffed her into the dresser and then put it back together in the early morning of August 21st, William and Brooke reportedly carried this dresser, not sketchy at all, down three flights of stairs into their Jeep Cherokee and drove it away. If a pregnant woman is missing in the apartment complex, you think it's just not weird that the two main suspects, the two last people to see this girl are carrying a dresser down three flights of stairs into their Jeep? Are we looking for a missing person and you're just gonna let someone, you know, walk down the stairs with a dresser? The two main suspects with the dresser and load it into their Jeep and just drive away. Where was the taping off? Where was the police watching who goes in and out of this apartment complex? I'm pretty sure if a patrol car sitting there watching the apartment complex and they see, oh, there's our suspects, walking down the stairs with the dresser, that's not sketchy at all, loading it into their car, you're not gonna follow them, you're not gonna say something, nope, nothing. I just feel like the police work in this is so frustrating because first you miss the body in the apartment building and then you let the two main suspects, which I think this building should have been on complete watch. If they knew those people were the last ones to see her, they should have been watching their every move. There is no reason why her body should not have been found in their apartment if the police did an extensive search, they would have found her in the closet and then they wouldn't have had a chance to dispose of her body. Her family would have had answers way sooner than dragging it out. And then on top of that, to let the suspects get away with stuffing her body in a dresser and just peacefully putting it in their car and driving away, like how could this have happened? There should have at least been one cop there watching and I'm pretty sure that would be kind of hard to miss because you can't carry a dresser with an entire eight month pregnant woman's body in it and it not be a little heavy and not take you a little long to get down the flights of stairs. But meanwhile the police called dogs and were still doing searches but somehow came up empty handed. You're not going to have the dog smell the car. You're not gonna have the dogs smell their apartment. It's just still empty handed. This does not make sense to me. This couple does not seem like, you know, criminal masterminds that would be able to pull off what they did and get away with it until the body was found. They just, they just don't look like that couple to me. They do not look like 
very smart people they don't look like they would be able to do this but it just goes to show that obviously the police were just not paying that much attention five days later the police do a no-knock search warrant on the house and this is when they finally found the newborn baby girl because they weren't able to hide it they didn't know that they were coming it was the element of surprise and they walk in and see a newborn baby girl so I know what we're all thinking our stomachs drop our hearts break how is this baby here Savannah was not due for another month Brooke was immediately arrested and William Hohen was picked up at his work for questioning the baby thankfully was alive and safe when they questioned Brooke, she started making up lie after lie after lie that Savannah did not want her baby. She didn't like her life. She wanted Brooke to keep the baby and she asked her how to self-induce labor and then came back a couple days later and gave her the baby to take care of. Really? You think she's going to give an entire stranger her baby when her entire family lives right below them? She told police that Savannah had ran away after that. Obviously, this doesn't make any sense. Meanwhile, while all this is happening, the baby is rushed to the hospital. And the saddest part about this, just put yourself in her boyfriend, her high school sweetheart situation. You have so much ahead of you. You have the love of your life, someone you've been with since you were a child. They're carrying your baby she goes missing and then five days later the person that she was last seen with has her baby and after multiple searches from police they just missed this small fact so until he was able to be ruled as the biological father from dna the baby would remain with child protective services on august 27th at 5.45, two kayakers were kayaking in the Red River, discovered a body. At 8.20, her body was pulled out of the river and identified as Savannah Greywind. According to Brooke, when Savannah helped her with this project, she pushed Savannah into the sink in their bathroom and she hit her head and fell unconscious. Although on Monday, Dr. Froloff, the medical examiner, said that Savannah had no sign of a head injury. Then Brooke decided to go into the kitchen, grab a box cutter, perform an at-home C-section while Savannah is fading in and out of consciousness and removes her unborn child. When William came home and saw Savannah on the floor and Brooke trying to clean up the mess, he asked her if she was dead. Brooke then reportedly replied, I don't know, please help me. William then went into the other room, grabbed a piece of rope, tied it around Savannah's neck to strangle her and said, well, if she wasn't dead before, she is now. The medical examiner was unable to determine if Savannah died from extreme blood loss from the c-section or strangulation, which is just heartbreaking. Then the couple went ahead and decided to dispose of her body in the river. An inmate that was serving time with William Hohen confirmed this story that William told him that he did put the body inside a dresser and that's how he disposed of it. Now, you're probably wondering what caused this couple to do such a thing. It all started in 2017 when Brooke lied to William and told her that she was pregnant. That August, William admitted that he knew Brooke wasn't pregnant, but he had already told his friends and family and that she better produce a baby. This alleged conversation made Brooke feel that she better have a baby or else. And when William allegedly mentioned that Grey Wind girl is really pregnant, Brooke took this as he wanted her to take her baby. The strange thing about this entire situation is that Brooke and William both had kids from previous relationships that neither of them had anything to do with. Brooke was not involved in her child's life whatsoever. And when her ex-boyfriend heard wind of this entire situation, the one that's currently taking care of her kid, he was just baffled. Like, why would she go to such great lengths to do this when she doesn't even want her own kid. A judge sent a two million cash bail because once they searched their computers, they saw that they were looking for places to run away to. So they were planning on fleeing. 
The funeral service was held on Thursday, September 7th, and the native tribe and everyone came to pay their respects. There were native songs and dances, and it was just a huge funeral. Hundreds of people came, people that some of them didn't even know, but it just felt good that they were supporting Savannah and that other people cared as much as they did. The people who attended the funeral also wore red shirts to support Savannah and also other indigenous women who have gone missing and gone unnoticed. The next day, the DNA test came back and they granted Ashton full custody of his beautiful baby girl. Such a bittersweet moment. I don't even know how he goes on with life. You have such a precious thing, a new life, and then you just lost the love of your life. I just don't even know how torn his heart must have been. But Hasley Joe was perfectly healthy, perfectly beautiful, looks just like his mom, as he says, and just reminds him every day of the love of his life. Of course, of course, both Ashton and Savannah's families are so involved on this little girl. She is just filled with so much love and joy, and it's just so sad that Savannah was not able to be part of this experience. On September 11, 2017, Brooke pled guilty to conspiracy to commit murder, conspiracy to kidnap, and lying to police. I wish there was a charge for what she did to Savannah because that just needs to be a whole separate charge, like in and of itself, performing a C-section before they're due, without their consent, needs to be a charge. But thankfully, she is going to be serving life without the possibility of parole, so she can just rot in prison for the rest of her life. Brooke admitted to having Savannah in her apartment and performing an at-home C-section on her. And William pled guilty on Tuesday, September 4th to charges of kidnapping and providing false information to the police. But sadly, on Friday, September 28th, a 12-person jury found him not guilty for the conspiracy to commit murder. If I remember correctly, this is the guy who disposed of the body, came up with the idea of putting it in the dresser, strangled her to make sure she was really dead. I feel like he's just as involved, if not more, as Brooke. Not to mention, he clearly abuses his girlfriend, clearly had some psychological hold on her to make her feel like she had to do such a thing. That takes a lot of manipulation and a lot of abuse. I'm not undermining that at all. I think he played a very, very big part in this situation. And he's trying to act like he just came home to this and she's just, you know, a little off. No you definitely played a part. And I definitely think he should have been convicted of conspiracy to commit murder. But thankfully, the judge still charged him with life. You might have gotten off on that one, but you're still serving life in prison, as you should. The only problem is that he does have the possibility of parole and he's already stated that he's going to appeal this conviction. A new bill called Savannah's Act proposed that there be more work and more research done for missing indigenous people. No one knows how many Native American women are missing or murdered. This is a hidden epidemic considering the government, the federal government, keeps tabs on literally everything, every statistic. There is no statistic or nowhere for natives to go that shows how many people are missing, so there is literally no way for tribal families or tribal members to find any information on anything. This story is just so incredibly sad and so incredibly heartbreaking. I am just thankful so much that Hasley Joe is safe and sound and she's reunited with her family, that she has a dad that cares so much about her and is supportive and is raising her on his own. Props to him, there are not a lot of men like him in this world today and the fact that she is lucky enough to have one of those and to call him her dad is just incredible. I feel so sorry for the family. I can't even imagine how it must feel to look at a baby and be reminded every day of just how it was born, how it came, just the entire situation. This couple did more than what they did. They ruined a special time for a family, someone's grandchild being born, someone's baby being born. They completely ripped that away from them. That's the type of moment where you're supposed to bond with your child. It's supposed to be a family event, everyone's excited, and they just completely took it away and they were just selfish. I don't even know how this couple, as I said before, I don't think they were the smartest couple. I don't know how they expected to have a little native baby 
and no one blink an eye or be like hey that baby has dark hair and dark eyes and dark skin and you guys are both clearly caucasian so how did that happen did you adopt it like where were they thinking down the road how did they expect to cover this up especially living in the same apartment complex like you really thought you were going to get away with that in the exact same apartment complex as these people you don't think you'd be walking around and they would see their baby and be like um that baby's the same age as it would have been if it was born and our daughter's missing and our baby's missing so clearly you did something i just don't know what this couple was thinking it is, just makes me sick the stupidity that they really thought they could get away with this that they thought this would just be an easy fix it's just so disturbing to me and this is for all of you girls out there that are pregnant or have kids just really be aware there really are crazy people out there there really are people that can't have babies and in this case can have babies but just want yours especially being pregnant you are way more vulnerable and you just really need to double check keep an eye out and just watch out for creepers there are so many people that are creepy and weird and have bad intentions and especially living in an apartment complex you don't know who's around you you don't know who your neighbors are you don't know what their background is so just make sure you guys are very very careful this could happen to anybody i hope it never happens again but just know that there are people like this in the world and to watch your back and to protect you and your family so leave your guys' comments down below about what you think about this case. It is so disturbing. I'm glad there's kind of a happy ending with the baby getting reunited with the dad, but still I'm just left feeling sick to my stomach because an innocent girl got her life taken away from her, her family taken away from her. She had everything and it was just ruined because of two selfish people's decisions. And that just does not sit well with me. I feel like the life sentence isn't enough for me. I feel like like they definitely should have gotten the death sentence but I am thankful that they're going to have to live the rest of their lives just knowing how dumb they are and how stupid their decisions are and hopefully live with the guilt of what they did and the severity of the situation because it's not okay so thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one